A reading from the second book of Kings. When Ataliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she began to kill off the whole royal family. But Jehosheba, daughter of King Jehoram and sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, his son, and spirited him away, along with his nurse, from the bedroom where the princes were about to be slain. She concealed him from Ataliah, and so he did not die. For six years, he remained hidden in the temple of the Lord, while Ataliah ruled the land. But in the seventh year, Jehoiada summoned the captains of the Carians and of the guards. He had them come to him in the temple of the Lord, exacted from them a sworn commitment, and then showed them the king's son. The captains did just as Jehoiada the priest commanded, each one with his men, both those going on duty for the Sabbath and those going off duty that week came to Jehoiada the priest. He gave the captains King David's spears and shields, which were in the temple of the Lord. And the guards with drawn weapons lined up from the southern to the northern limits of the enclosure, surrounding the altar and the temple on the king's behalf. Then Jehoiada led out the king's son and put the crown and the insignia upon him. They proclaimed him king and anointed him, clapping their hands and shouting, Long live the king. Ataliah heard the noise made by the people and appeared before them in the temple of the Lord. When she saw the king standing by the pillar, as was the custom, and the captains and trumpeters near him, with all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets, she tore her garments and cried out, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest instructed the captains in command of the force, Bring her outside through the ranks. If anyone follows her, he added, let him die by the sword. He had given orders that she should not be slain in the temple of the Lord. She was led out forcibly to the horse gates of the royal palace, where she was put to death. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord as one party and the king and the people as the other, by which they would be the lost people, and another covenant between the king and the people. Thereupon, all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and demolished it. They shattered its altars and images completely and slew Mathan, the priests of Baal, before the altars. Jehoiada appointed a detachment for the temple of the Lord. All the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet. Now that Atalia had been slain with a sword at the royal palace. The word of the Lord. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. The Lord saw to David a firm promise from which he will not withdraw. Your own offspring I will set upon your throne. The Lord, Lord has, has chosen Zion for his dwelling. If your sons keep my covenants and the decrees which I shall teach them, their sons too forever shall sit upon your throne. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He prefers her for his dwelling. Zion is my resting place forever. In her will I dwell. 
for I prefer her. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. In her will I make a horn to sprout forth for David. I will place a lamb for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon him my crown shall shine. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. Hallelujah. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and decay destroy, and thieves break in and steal. But store up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroys, nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. The lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is sound, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be darkness. And if the light in you is darkness, how great will the darkness be? Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we are still reflecting on the books of Kings. When I read today's first reading, I began to wonder what was going on. And so I read a commentary that said that it has to do with a palace coup, an overthrow of those who were ruling in Israel by then. And it happened to be the granddaughter of our famous Queen Jezebel. Because they didn't have a legitimate right to rule, some descendants of David carried out a coup in the palace and got rid of them. However, in getting rid of them also, they did away with the altar of Baal, which was still there. It means the worship of Baal had continued into about the third generation. And after they did away with the altar of Baal, they established the right altar, the altar dedicated to Yahweh, and they renewed the covenant between God with the king and the people. In that sense, God becomes their God, and the people becomes his people. Now, what I pick from this particular reading is that the worship of false gods will always lead to destruction. 
the worship of false gods will always lead to destruction. There is nothing good that will come out of it, even if it doesn't happen immediately. So in as much as it was a warning to the people of Israel, it should also be a warning to us. Because false gods are always around us. And it is always tempting to fall into idolatry. By definition, what is idolatry? Anything that you are devoted to can become an idol. Anything, just anything that you are devoted to, you spend all your time on, can become an idol. So in our own modern times, some of the gadgets and equipment that we have surrounded ourselves with that take all our time are gradually turning into idols for us. And the danger is that they will destroy us in the end. There is nothing good that will come out of it. So I pray that we heed to Jesus' warning in the gospel where he challenges us to rather be devoted to the things of God. Because when we are devoted to the things of God, then our hearts will be there. And because our hearts are in the things of God, they will be in God. And that is how we will secure our salvation. May he grant us the grace to live according to his word. Amen. Amen. Let us rise and present our knees before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the priests of the Lord, that like Jehoiada, they may act prudently and bravely to safeguard the covenant between God and his people, renewing the bond whenever it comes under attack. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the nations of the world may rejoice and their lands may be quiet and at peace with one another and the rulers who fear the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That our eyes may be sound to see the truth of every situation and that the radiance of the Holy Spirit may fill us with light and counsel to guide our actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are in need of prayer today, the sick, the unemployed, the imprisoned, and abused and addicted, that the power of this holy sacrifice may shatter the chains that bind them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our dear ones who have died, that they may find a treasure waiting for them in heaven, where their good works commend them to a merciful Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for our personal and individual intentions. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. God, our Father, hear the prayers of your children who have gathered before you this morning. 
Your mercy grant to us all that we ask for in faith, for we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. 